Hello and welcome to this special edition of Greater Somerville. I'm Joe Lynch. Somerville High School has been known by three names since its inception in 1852. The Somerville Free High School, the Somerville Latin School, and its current name, Somerville High School. Its long and proud history has served tens of thousands of students over the years, and now it is showing the wear and tear of those years of service. Although modified, expanded, and partially added to over the last 100 years or so, the city now realizes that in order to continue to serve the students' educational needs well into the 21st century, our community will need to face the fact that action is now needed. We'll talk about the initiative for a new Somerville High School with the former superintendent of schools and current chair of the new High School Building Committee, Tony Parentazzi, and from the architectural firm SMMA that has been engaged by the city to assist in the design, Alex Pitkin. Stay tuned for Greater Somerville. Thanks for watching. Gentlemen, welcome back to SCAT TV. Tony, you're no stranger. Here. I am not, Joe. Thank you you're for inviting no stranger us. stranger here. So, you know, the initiative has been out there. Yep. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about the process, but we're going to start with the history. How's that? Talk a little bit, Tony, if you will, about the complex that sits atop Central mm -hmm. Hill, adjacent to City Hall and the Central Library. Take it away. Thanks, Joe. Well, the, uh, the high school sits right across the very top of Central Hill. And the main entry of the high school uh, with the uh, curved entry and the granite steps was built in 1895. That's the main section of the front of that building. It is surrounded actually by buildings uh, to, its, to its left, behind it, and to its right that were built in 1929 uh, the building, interestingly enough, had little corner additions in 1914. And then, of course, um, the War Memorial uh, Gymnasium, which is now being used as the library, was part of that 1929 uh, addition. So, you know, historically, it's kind of interesting. Massive additions to the high school in 1929. Uh, and, of course, if they had delayed a little bit, the Great Depression would have occurred. There you go. Those, those additions will probably still be in planning today. They, they <laughs> possibly could. And then uh, a couple of uh, small additions in uh, 1988, another elevator was added when the um, career vocational technical education wing was, was moved over from uh, East Somerville and the, um, the health center, a very small section in 2006 was opened. So that's the history of the building. It's uh, the 1929, 1895 additions really have never received a major thorough renovation. It, it could be the oldest um, unrenovated uh, secondary school that we know of. Um, it did have a 1950s renovation, which was an interesting one. It, the original 1895 building used to have a beautiful mansard roof, and there was a fire, and then they put a flat roof on it. Yeah. Uh, but didn't do much else. But the whole complex really has morphed over time since about 1895. Right. Added to a little renovation here, a blown off roof during Hurricane Sandy here, right. some insurance claims, the Gene Brune mm -hmm. addition. But we have never undertaken in over 100 years the complete revamping of the existing facility. And we have never rebuilt that facility in a new site. So people have to when we start talking about building a new high school, it's something that people, you know, I, I think a lot of people can't fathom, that right. we haven't really moved anything from nope. that site in well over 100 years. The most interesting thing about what you just said was that we now have a very large high school that has nothing to do with education. It had to do with building additions on it. Mm -hmm. And this process that we're going through with the MSBA and under the the guidance of SMMA is really starting with the foundational concept of what's a, an education in the 21st century. And we have to build a building that supports that education. So let's, let's go to that for one minute, Tony. You, you used an acronym there, the Massachusetts School Building Authority um, sent a letter to the city a little while ago and basically said, your physical plant, your high school itself, 
is in need of some upgrading. Is that a fair assessment of what they're the, saying? The actual letter came from the uh, New England Association of, of Schools and Colleges, which do an accreditation system for all secondary yep. schools. Th that was the original um, generation of this process. Um, they basically said in the area of community support for education that you have a building that uh, needs s significant attention and when we come back in seven years, we expect to see progress. And when you file your intermediate reports, we expect to hear that progress is being made. Right. Now, the fact that we have submitted a statement of interest to MSBA was progress. The fact that uh, we are now in, in uh, ending, really, the feasibility study is progress. And in June, we will see, be submitting a preferred option to the MSBA would be interpreted as progress. So we're, we're moving forward. So we have an old site, old buildings, heat inefficient, oh. cooling inefficient, None. roof blows off. Um, ADA, there, I would assume there are some ADA issues mm -hmm. with the building itself. So all of that taken together, you, you know, what I wanted to frame for the general public was this is not a case of where, you know, the mayor or the Board of Aldermen or the school committee or the former superintendent took it upon themselves to say, we're going to build a brand new high school. This is something that is being said by another authority. The school accreditation system is saying you need to do this, either completely renovate what you have now or go build yourselves a new one. That, that's basically what they're saying. Is it needs to be upgraded. They, um, the accreditation um, report basically stated that Somerville High School as it currently exists cannot support 21st century education for the next 50 or 60 or 70 and that's really I'll what it's I'll paraphrase about. it. They're sending the warning shot. Th they are. They're basically sending the warning shot. So that prompts the city to act and mm -hmm. you were superintendent at the time that the discussion started to happen about how do we move ahead with this? How do we satisfy these folks who are saying we need to take mm -hmm. some action? Um, in the interim, you, you did uh, something that everybody en envies you for. You submitted your resignation and said, I've been in education for 40-something years. 47. 47 years, <laughs> but I'll be happy to help you with the new high school. Absolutely. So you now have the responsibility as the chair of the committee. Explain a little bit what the makeup of that committee is sure. and what your uh, charge is. First of all, it's, it's fun, it's exciting, it's challenging, frustrating at times, but... Um, Significant need generates discussion in our community. I've always loved that about Somerville for, throughout my decade here, that uh, people are reasonable and they, they recognize it. Uh, nobody wants to spend money unnecessarily, but clearly when you go to Chelsea or Everett or Cambridge, Ridge and Latin, or any of the surrounding communities and look at their high schools, ours sticks out like a sore thumb. So a we beautiful put, building. Gorgeous. Right. Gorgeous. But inefficient. Inefficient. The energy, uh, you know, we still have some single pane windows that are gigantic windows. Um, we have done, uh, I mean, the city and the school district has done amazing work in upgrading what they could. But now the bones, as the architects say, the, mm. the framework of that building is in dire straits. And it's so old that, you know, it doesn't have steel in certain sections of right. it. It's just solid masonry. Um, we did a little bit of repair over the years, but it's, it's time. So the building committee has been formed, and the building committee has 15 voting members who are representative of the uh, city. The, the mayor is on it. I'm the chair. Uh, there's an alderman, uh, Mary Jo Rossetti, Steve Royce, uh, school committee representative. We have two teachers. We have Ed Bean, the director of of finance, the current superintendent, the headmaster. Uh, we have a student, Max mm -hmm. Nadeau. Mm -hmm. um, we have the director of capital projects for the city, Rob King, uh, the DPW commissioner, Stan Cody. We also have Tom Bent, who's the chair of the uh, vocational advisory committee, mm -hmm. and the assistant superintendent in charge of curriculum. Mm -hmm. So we have a very uh, eclectic group and um, we, and I'm going to t uh, ask Alex to describe the process that M SMMA led us through uh, to get us to where we are now in terms of we started kind of with, you know, 
But there was an interim step there that the committee actually chose SMMA. So there, yeah. there was a bidding process that went out and said, okay, architects, we're looking to do this. Mm -hmm. Come on in, meet with us. And SMMA was chosen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And not only the building committee, but the Massachusetts School Building Authority is our partner every step of the way. Okay. So mm -hmm. they actually, the, the board of the building authority actually interviewed the finalists okay. That we sent so, to them. So, Alex, why don't you take it away in terms sure. of, um, you know, maybe some of the background for SMMA? Have you done major projects like this for educational institutions in the past? Uh, uh, absolutely. And one of the uh, things I will quickly say is that I've never been working with a building committee in my 20 plus years that a lot of the committee members actually went to that high school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really quite unusual in, in many ways. So. Uh, but that said, really the foundation of this conversation has been, uh, and Tony alluded to it, was 21st century education and planning. First and foremost, we're educational planners, but I think one of the things that immediately got us to the table is that we've done about 25 high schools in the last 20 years. So we really are... Regionally foremost. based, New England? Uh, virtually all of those are in Massachusetts, but there's a, probably a couple others that are also, we have an office in Rhode Island mm -hmm. as well, uh, and do some other work regionally, so yes. Uh, and I think a few years ago, my children have gone to Somerville High School as well. I'm a resident of the city. And one of the things that uh, we had done in conversations with Tony and with others was we, we completed Quincy High School about seven years ago. And that was when the authority was just starting. And it's very similar to Somerville in terms of demographics uh, and particularly in terms of the educational programs that are within that comprehensive high school. And that's where we have the vocational, the CVTE programs. Uh, and those standard college uh, supportive programs that we talk about as well. And Quincy is quite unique in the state in that those are even mashed up even more uh, interestingly. So we, the theory and the idea is that just because you're in a CVT program, you're not locked in, those children are going to college at a, a very uh, high rate here in Somerville as well. Yeah, almost 90%. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah. Further their education. It's not just about career track. It's really about expanding their lifelong learning. But as an architect, you know, the Central Hill City of Somerville existing site poses a lot of challenges. Absolutely. The challenges of what do you save and what do you demolish. Mm -hmm. The challenge of the fact that it sits on a hill and the fact that you have two fairly historic buildings on either side. How did you address that in the initial stages? Well, we, uh, one of the things, the process is quite rigorous and we would go through this as architects anyhow and designers is we, it's all about creating options and uh, opportunities for the committee to deliberate and to think about uh, the value of simply just repairing the building and leaving it in its current state with these inefficiencies uh, in terms of the way it's laid out, the way that the programs don't intersect. You know, that was, I would say, relatively easy one to set aside simply because it's still quite expensive as, a, as an option to renovate. Uh, but then there's a whole series of options when you start to think about, well, what if you do take down the 1929 wings or you do repair pieces uh, um, on the back side of the hill? And so in a complicated pro project like Somerville High School, you start to see a lot of options in the middle. And I think we had something like four options with a couple of sub-options for doing additions and renovations. So variations on variations the same the theme. Because it is... It truly is limited as to where we can actually put additions. And started with, with other sites other than Central Hill yep. before we came I'm to glad you brought that up because, you know, there were a lot of people who thought um, initial discussions that were being had is that we have a few options here, folks. You know, we can renovate the existing complex as is. We can go look for a new site to build a brand new and figure out what to do with the old later on. I, I, simplistically, that was with the first two. And then, Tony, why don't you take it from there? Because I did attend one of the community mm -hmm. meetings where the option about, you know, possibly re repurposing, is that a good word to use? Repurposing one of the athletic fields in the city. Mm -hmm. But those were quickly taken off the table. Why don't you explain why? Sure. Um, from an analysis of 22 possible sites, it came down basically to the DPW building and Trump Field and the current site. And the analysis um, of the Trump field would really pose e significant problems in no order 
the DPW building would have to be demolished and, and replaced somewhere in the city. Uh, there would probably have to be some kind of an environmental inspection and cleanup. The field could not be used for the high school unless the city found qualitatively and quantitatively at least as good a field somewhere else or built one. To replace to replace Trump away. Field. Yep. And Trump Field has some historical um, special feelings in the city, uh, particularly after its la latest renovation. I mean, it's been there for a long, long time. What I did hear, though, was that the mayor said, Joe Lynch lives two streets away. <laughs> Let's stay away from Trump Field. Is there any credibility to that statement, Tony? Uh, not, not publicly, but uh, <laughs> what the mayor thinks privately is, of course, not in my purview of, but the of problem, responsibility. The problem so, really came down to the state says if you're going to use that open space mm -hmm. and take it away, you have to replace it. For and that has else to be in the city. And it has to be approved by right, the state. Right. And the last time we tried that with our Genziano, it was not approved. Right. So our thinking was if we couldn't get it approved for our Genziano, we're right. probably not going to get it here. And we never solved the parking issue at the Trump Field DPW. How do we incorporate How that? How to incorporate in? the parking? Right. Right. We 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 knew we could put the building there. We knew we could have a, an athletic complex, but we we say well, where does everybody park when they right. go to it? Right. Uh, which we have solved with this plan. It, so, so back to both of you, um, the question comes in then you have a bunch of meetings, you mm -hmm. have a lot of community input that's coming in, not just from parents, but that's from right. neighbors who may be affected by the yep. proposed plans. Then you whittle this down. Yep. So between the architectural firm, the committee, and public input, you've kind of whittled this down mm -hmm. to an option. And the option says, considering everything we talked about using open space in the city, what limited open space right. we have, we're going to try to incorporate on Central Hill, saving some historic part of this mm -hmm. building, but we're going to build new around it. So do you want to kind of, sure. do we want to talk about it in terms of the alternative? Because I think that's what people are yeah. going to see on your website. I think uh, when you look on our website um, and you go to uh, alternative 4B, which is the preferred option voted by the building committee on April 11th, what you will see is the 1895 building standing alone with the 1929 sections of the building around it removed. And the high school really built to the east, or if you're standing on Highland Avenue, to the right of the property, um, surrounding both the uh, war memorial uh, front of the old gymnasium, the current library, and the field house. We're retaining the field house, retaining the front of the war memorial, and possibly more. That is an engineering question and retaining the original 1895 uh, front of that building with the 1914 corners still attached. So, so, you, so what's being created is an open space. Now, when you go over the cusp of the hill, there would be an athletic field behind the 1895 building, and we are proposing to put a parking structure beneath that. And that, you know, for the folks who are looking, hopefully, at this slide at home, what they are looking at is the school street entrance to that back parking lot. That's what you're talking about where the athletic field and the parking would mm -hmm. be. So it, it kind of actually comes behind City Hall yep. and then goes behind the old 1895 entrance to the existing high school. Talk about the advantages of that because I see on the slide there on the depiction you have a little bit of green roof area. Correct. And, uh, this is all obviously to be resolved with uh, our next uh, level of design effort, but the real the thinking here was that we would think of the site as a master plan, not just simply a high school, not just simply City Hall or the main branch of the library. How do we think of this as a composition for all these many different people, citizens of the city that are going to be coming and using the Central Hill? And so the field um, on top of the parking is something that we had familiarity with and was one of the things that we also touted. We've done one at WPI and also two down at Providence College. A uh, very rare experience actually in our Commonwealth. But the idea of having a turf top field on top of structured parking is a complicated endeavor, but it really speaks to the question of the fact that Somerville doesn't have 
available open space. open space. And it is also part, if I can just interject there, it's also part of the initiative that you're trying to do this as a green initiative. Mm -hmm. Yes, yep. Yeah, we do want to limit parking, obviously, with the Gilman Square Station coming. Um, you know, it's the right amount of parking. We also, one of the ideas in the master plan was to try to limit parking at the front of the site, right? We want to right. kind of restore that idea that that historic um, uh, a green space shouldn't be violated by cars uh, to as little extent as possible. Yeah, when you drive, when you walk or drive by Highland Avenue right now and you look at the high school, you see headlights up until about 18, 19, 20 right. feet mm. of the building. Mm. So that beautiful entry that was built in 1890, really? Yeah. Um, well, it's still, yeah, I, I, I agree it. with what you're saying. I mean, I hate to see, you know, banged up Subaru sitting in front of yeah. this beautiful building. <laughs> but, you know, it is the welcoming part. I've always said to the mayor and to other folks in the city, it is one of the most impressive municipal yeah. complexes that we have. Right. So most of, Alex, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no. it looks like what's happening is that there are three main structures that will be saved. It's the existing old 1895 frontage, it's the War Memorial, and it's the Field House. That's and your job, bless you on this, is to try to <laughs> glad fit, somebody feels <laughs> to try to fit a new high school yes. in around That's those right. three complexes. Right. And you have the, the topographical challenge as well because That's you're right. sitting on a hill. Right. Now one of the tours that we took the uh, committee on was uh, currently under construction in its second phase is the Winchester High School. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what I like to say is if you can scale a complex project, Quincy was a very complicated project as well, uh, between 1 and 10, Somerville gives us a 15. Mm -hmm. But uh, the point is, is we've, we've tackled these problems on other projects and getting down into the phasing and starting to understand that is really uh, what's ahead of us. How Just many stories is this going to go up at its so, maximum? So right now we're in the process of test fitting all of that, going right back again to the programming effort that was done and the educational visioning that was done. Right now the goal is to not use the 1895 uh, structure for the educational uh, use. We may City can use, use it at a later point. School exactly. committee's in charge of it until they decide not to be, but mm -hmm. if, uh, mm -hmm. we told the, the Historic uh, Preservation Commission that part of this project would not be the demolition of that part of the, that building. Right. Great. Scat TV may need a new home, so <laughs> I'll put my dibs into the mayor. There's, there's no Sorry, end. There is a wonderful <laughs> broadcast program that we're planning <laughs> yeah. on uh, in the space, so that's, uh, that's definitely a hallmark. Uh, the two other spaces that hopefully are showing up on the screen, the Broomfield House and the War Memorial, are spaces that, because of the dense urban nature of the site, we have to stack spaces, and those spaces are already stacked. It's not just a field house. Anybody who does know the high school knows that there's quite a few uh, technical programs underneath there, and that's valuable space. Uh, the cheapest space we have is that that's already been built, and we want to take advantage of that. And the same thing underneath the uh, War Memorial. So that shifts the new main entrance where most of the students and staff would be arriving uh, between the library and the War Memorial, and I think that will be a, a welcoming and inviting yep. uh, new um, piece of architecture for the city, quite yep. frankly. And I would assume, I would assume you're keeping in mind that the Gilman Street Green yep. Line stop eventually will come Absolutely. as beco yeah. almost become part of that complex. And Absolutely. that's the way yeah. students yeah. are yeah. going to get back and right. forth between schools. And I'm sure you were there last week um, at the community path, extremely well attended. Yes. Uh, and yeah. there are impacts, and we want to make sure that that community path, however it ends up, that we're ready for it, that the, the yeah. idea of the stepping down the hill and connecting to what potentially is going to be a, a new major square in the city of Somerville are is you addressed. Are you considering a direct connection between what I call Government Hill yeah. or Education Hill? Right. Are, are you going to make a direct connection, if you can, uh, between the Green Line stuff? Well, right now we're, that's still in play because of some of the engineering aspects of where the community path will fall. It's a very steep drop from yep. the right. front door down, right. so and ha a field has to be flat. A field can't terrace, right? So we are going to have to solve Zip all lines. That. <laughs> Zip about, lines well, for the students. Tony's Italian. He would appreciate a funicular uh, <laughs> on site, right? So. The, uh, there's a couple other major factors that this plan took into consideration that other plans did not. One was retaining the lines of vision to the historic buildings yep. from, from uh, Highland Avenue. If you look at the plan, we're not building up against the street, which right. a lot of urban schools have to do. Um, th that's one. Two is opening it up to the back of the property the way it was originally in the 1800s and, and even before. 
uh, one interesting um, side note, the 1895 building had the auditorium built on the back of it in 1929. The 1895 building is actually more ornate on the mm -hmm. rear of the building. Mm -hmm. So it was obviously constructed to be viewed from all four Certainly. sides, Correct. and that's what we're re Correct. returning it to, which, which I th I'm really happy about. Right, and the interesting part of that was I had asked, you know, you brought the point up that it was to be viewed from all aspects. That's right. Sure. And if you remember, the passenger trains on the old Lexington Arlington line ran right, right behind. That's so right. they they have the they, vision. They had it. Yeah. Right. Uh, there, it's it's actually a gorgeous building uh, from both sides. And then the third thing is to uh, to um, open up the congestion a little bit by getting uh, City Hall and the main entry to the auditorium and the school a little further apart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you know, obviously we don't have any site plans yet, but to to see how we can develop that on the Highland Avenue side. But also uh, the preliminary drawings have an entry to the high school coming from mm -hmm. the Met Medford Street, mm -hmm. which I think, again, is important. One of the things I was asked, um, you know, a couple of veterans in the neighborhood, they know that the uh, honor roll memorial mm -hmm. is right there on the front part of the concourse. I think our Vietnam yes, War is. Memorial yes. is in front of the War Memorial building itself. That's right. Um, the, will those be kept as part of what I call the presentation of city center. We're waiting for the city's decision. Right? That's yeah. the building committee has very limited authority and responsibility. Clearly, it does not have any authority or responsibility over the memorials of the city. That would be the Veterans Commission. And uh, right now, by trying to keep the buildings back, we are attempting to not interfere with those memorials. So none of the none of this 4B or any of the other alternatives that I've seen anyway had anything to do with the concourse itself, where those memorials are. So That's I, I wanted to ask the question, but sure. you know, there are more and more and more slides that we have looked at. Um, but I want to make sure that people know where to go on the city's website. Could sure. Could you give that to us verbally? I, I could. Um, it's the city's website, which is uh, www.somervillema.gov forward slash high school forward slash. So all you have to remember is go to the city's website, put a slash, put high school. You're invited back. You're both invited thank back you. once Love you get uh, all this paperwork in and we hear <laughs> back from the state. I want to thank my guests. They have been Tony Parentazzi, the chair of the new Somerville High School Building Committee, and Alex Pitkin from SMMA, the architectural firm engaged by the city. For Greater Somerville, I'm Joe Lynch. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.